Hello everyone, welcome back. In this demonstration, we are going to look about SAP HR HCM configuration, SAP ECC source configuration, and the use cases that we have discussed, that is on-band access request, SOD policy violation, lever scenario, and certification campaign. Coming to SAP HR source, so once you are login as admin into your SharePoint tenant, you need to create a direct connected source choosing SAP HR or HCM as a connector. So once you have configured the metadata of the source, you will be redirected to the basic configuration. In the base configuration, you need to fill the source owner name and you need to choose the virtual appliance cluster. So as in the prerequisite, we have mentioned that we need to have a virtual appliance that is healthy in a cluster. So we have chosen one of the cluster where our virtual appliance is healthy and up and running. So choosing a governance group is optional. When you scroll down a bit, you can see the character files. So as in the prerequisites, uh, we need to have SAP JCO 3.char file, lib SAP JCO 3.so files. So these two files are imported over here. Since we have used .so file, since SAP HR system is hosted on the Unix system. So once you enter the base configuration details, you must save it and move on to the next section that is connection settings. In the connection settings, you need to enter the service account username and password. Post that, you need to enter host IP address, system number of SAP HR system, client number and client language. So once you enter the uh, correction settings attribute values, you need to save it and move on to the next part that is aggregation settings. So in the aggregation settings, as we have discussed in the presentation, we have two values over here, future date head offset and termination offset. So we have mentioned a positive value that is 30 and 60 over here. Coming to manager configuration, we have discussed there are two types of manager configuration that are available. One is OOSP model and SS model. So the SAP HR that is integrated that is following SS model. So choosing the SS model as the manager configuration. Save the aggregation settings and move on to additional settings. In the additional settings, uh, we have not configured anything, just le left it as it is. If you want, you can use the delta aggregation and also you can fill the B API values. So once you save the B API aggregation filters additional attribute values and the delta aggregation if needed, save the configuration and move on to advanced settings. In the advanced settings, you can use communication settings to be configured where we can specify any communication values such as email, phone number that will be overwritten that are coming from the aggregation. So once you fill the communication configuration, save the settings and move on to review and test. So once you review all the configuration details, you can test the connection. So it will return test success. That means the configuration that you have filled is a successful. Coming to direct connector ECC source. So this is uh, once you log into your tenant as an admin and you have created a SAP direct connector source choosing the connector type as SAP direct connection. And once you're in the configuration page, you, you will see a wizard like this. You need to fill a source owner name and the governance group is optional and you need to choose the virtual appliance cluster as is specified in the prerequisite. In the connection credentials, you need to use the service account username and password. Similarly, in the server host wizard, you need to fill the SAP host URL and SAP system number. In the client details, you need to enter the client number and as well as the client language. So once you fill all the basic details that are required, 
you need to upload the custom connector files that are required to connect to SAP ECC source. That is SAP JCO3.SO and SAP JCO3.char files. So once you upload all, all the required connection connector files and fill all the user credentials, you can click on test connection. So that will show the source is connected and the communication is successful. So coming to our use cases. So we will start with our access request. So we have created a demo user. So when he is requesting for a entitlement called SAP CDMC master in the ECC source. So I'm requesting for the demo user. And the expiration date filling is optional and click on submit in my request tab you can see the demo user request so that is in currently in provisioning part provisioning state so once the provisioning is completed user will have an account in ecc source with the sap cdmc master as an entitlement so here the provisioning is completed. You can verify in the demo user accounts. So he have a ECC source account is created with the specified entitlement. So we we'll get an email as well. that submit a request. So in the ECC source, you can see the SAP CDMC master entitlement has been assigned. Coming to SOD policy, we have configured a test SOD policy where it will specify user cannot have SAP CDMC master entitlement from ECC source and he cannot have Z user basic from HANA source. So we have another source called SAP HANA that's, that is also a direct connector, SAP direct connector. It have an entitlement called Z user basic. So we are specifying a SOD policy where user cannot have both the entitlements at the same time so now we have requested for sap cdmc master for the demo user so if we request z user basic from hana source the violation policy will be shown so here i am requesting for hana source and the expression it is optional So here you can see conflict taxes and the approval approver will get the warning as well who is approving this set user basic approval. So you can see SOD policy violation has been detected. Coming to lever scenario, I have a test user whose lifecycle state is active. So whenever his lifecycle state is inactive, the accounts will be disabled. So here you can see SAP ECC source account got disabled when the user lifecycle state is inactive. So coming to certification campaigns, that is the final use case. So in the certification campaigns, you can start either manager campaign or a source owner campaign from the certificate cap campaign tab. So you can name it as And you can choose a source as ECC source. So once you enter the name description and choose a source, you can preview the campaign. So it will take some time to generate the preview of the campaign that is configured.
so it will take some time to generate the preview so once the preview is generated you can start the campaign and certify the user access that the users have So this the preview is ready and you, here you can see there are 25 identities that need to be certified by the source owner. So once you, once you start this campaign, the campaign will be activated. So this is the campaign that is activated and the source owner need to certify all the 25 identities present in the source. So that's all for these use cases that we have discussed. Thank you.